Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Payson. Welcome back to everyone who's already a subscriber to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now. And if you've been around this MMA Fancast YouTube channel all, you know the undefeated amateur and former uh, 145 champ for 247 and now undefeated pro, Lucas the Sniper Seabird and... He is the main event a week and two days away from the main event on October 26th for 247 Fighting Championships. Brawl on the Berg 24. Really excited to have you back on the show. Welcome back, champ. What's up, man? How you doing? I am doing great. It, you, you are always fantastic. You're so much fun to watch. I call you champ because you were the now, I guess, former, but you were the 145-pound uh, featherweight champ for 247. Your teammate will be fighting for your belt, which is really exciting. But uh, let's point out the obvious. You've got incredible hair, and even more important than your hair right now is your shirt. Let's look at your shirt. I know you've got them for sale. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm going to be selling these at the event, Steel City Seabird, um, representing, you know, the Steel City of Pittsburgh. Um, it's kind of my homage to uh, to all the people around me. You know, a little homage to Mike Wilkins, Iron City Mike. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it, they're going to be for sale. Um, they're selling they're selling fast. I don't, I don't know if I'll have have them all there. I bought 100 and shit, I might I might sell out of them. But they should be available at the venue if people maybe get there early and buy them. Um, yeah, 100 percent. Hoping uh, hoping I make some new fans and they go and buy some T-shirts while they're there. Well, I think that's been your journey the entire time. I've watched you. I had the honor of calling uh, your first debut fight, Cage Side, which was a one-hitter quitter, which was pretty exciting for a guy that I knew that you came from the Division I wrestling background. And you don't necessarily think of, uh, you know, a, a first fight for a D1 wrestler as a, as a KO like that. Uh, let, let's talk about basically your thoughts eight, nine days away now from – being the main event i pushed that at the beginning you're the main event you went from being for 247 you went from being a debut which you were a big deal as a debut don't get me wrong i was there i you were still a big deal but it's a bigger deal to be main event what does that feel like being the main event with the same organization where you debuted as an amateur it's surreal man like i remember having this uh these interviews when i was an amateur making my amy debut you know through every fight um, and you know, now I'm main event in shows. It's my second main event. I did 21 and a half. I was a main event. Uh, and you know, now I'm, now I'm main event on this show, a big show, a night show. Um, and it's, it's a blessing. In fact, talking about that, uh, victory at 21 and a half, which was your first main event. It was also the day, so this will be your first evening uh, main event. You you got a very nice decision win over Nathaniel Grubham at the uh, 21 and a half the afternoon, and uh, you're undefeated as a, as a pro. You're also undefeated, I already mentioned, as an amateur. You're also undefeated as a pro grappler for the 247 grappling and the stop fight grappling as well. It, it's obviously you're on quite a tear. I think this is always a good question to ask. Now that you're two pro MMA fights into your career after an incredible amateur career. What do you see as being the biggest, uh, like, to you, difference at pro? Is it the length? Is it the skill set? Is it the tools that you're allowed to use? I mean, because at one point you were fighting at the highest level for amateur belts. You took on Cam the Mulrat, Agar. You guys were both top ranked in the nation when you guys had that fight. So what now two fights in and obviously – you know, in five, six more fights, we're talking a bigger show, UFC, whatever. But for now, what do you see as being the big uh, step up at your pro level? I think um, it's the time. Like, obviously, like the the rule set's different, uh, elbows, knees. And I think a as we've seen in my fights, those are things that, you know, I've been training since I was an amateur. And uh, it wasn't – it didn't take long for me to get accustomed to those. Um so my debut, my pro debut, I was ready for that. Um, I think the biggest difference is, one, there's no easy fights. 
right? Mm -hmm. Once you're, especially once you're two and out pro, uh, there's no easy fights. Um, and then, you know, the time, uh, having gone 15 minutes with Nathaniel Grebel, um, battling through injuries in the fight, um, battling through, you know, self doubt at times in a fight up a weight class, main eventing, um, you know, having all my, the kids I teach there, um, you know, having gone through that, I, I have a, a, like, I almost feel like a, a different perspective on being pro. Like, I feel like I'm actually pro now. Uh, having gone 15 minutes, it's like, it, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, I think that's the biggest difference, the amount of time and just like battling through the adversity. I mean, I appreciate, I would have appreciated any answer, but I do think that that, makes the biggest difference. That's like the difference between thinking you're good because you're running the 5K in a race and now suddenly it's a 10K. Like it literally is twice as much work as as before. Obviously that makes a big difference. Um, and I do think, you know, I do think you are right to say that you're really a pro. Clearly your win against uh, uh, Jake Zach was was incredible. The That stepping in knee, uh, the timing, we've talked about it because you came on the show after it. That is that is incredible stuff. At the same time, going to a full decision win um, is even more impressive when, when, when you think about it. Now, you mentioned having to jump up and wait. If I remember right, originally that wasn't the case, but you ended up taking the fight uh, higher because of, of some things moving around. Now that you're main eventing, you're main eventing against a guy who has over a dozen pro fights in Eddie uh, Alvarez, what are your what are your thoughts on saying yes to a guy that at least his pro number of fights are what would that be six times your pro number of fights? What 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 made you say yes to him at this point? Uh, I think it's the right step up. I think uh, you know competing against somebody who has twelve professional fights compared to my two um, on paper, like you know that's that's a little scary. Um, obviously his, his, his record is, is something that, that like, you know, a lot of people are going to like shake their head at, but, you know, dude stepped in there 12 times. I don't know how many amateur fights he had, but I would imagine, you know, he's had 20 fights. Um, I've had seven. So I think the, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm putting myself out there against somebody who's much, much more experienced than me. Um, but, you know, I favor myself. Well, yeah, we'll get to the prediction and, and because you always have, um, I'd say, realistic confidence. You Cocky confidence is when you don't have the skills to back it up. Realistic confidence is when you have the skills. You've been putting the work in at Stout Pittsburgh. Um, and you, you, I mean, you've called your shot a couple of times, almost like Mystic Mac, which we've talked about on this show. Uh, so it's been really exciting. But with his record of which, according to Topology, is four wins, uh, nine losses as a pro. Tapology doesn't have any record of amateurs. I would assume he got amateurs somewhere, but he's been pro for so long. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I want to be. I want to be straight up. We've seen incredibly tough fighters that have losing records at the pro regional level because I always think to be a pro at any regional level at any record, whether it's your record or his record, it's the training, it's the grind, it's the experience that matters. And somebody that's been at pro for that long means he's training at a pro level for that long. And I think that even matters more than his record for people that say that. Also, I think because I've been watching a lot of Dana White contender series, as I know you do, is this is a step up in competition because Tapology ranks everybody right there. They can look at records. They can see what's going on. And so I still think this is a step up in competition for you because of the number of fights, because of experience. And then obviously – you, you take another step and another step and another step. We talk about that at your amateur. So with your confidence coming in, coming out of uh, Stout Pittsburgh and representing them and being a great uh, pro at their level, uh, your buddy, who's another Lucas, uh, but goes by Luke. Luke Martin is also following quite literally in your footsteps. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts about representing Stout before we get to your actual prediction? Because – I like to bring this up anytime a stout guy's on or girl is there's only been two, two, four, seven yearly uh, awards, fan awards. 
And uh, they're a big deal. Thousands of people vote. This, these aren't small time awards. And we've done award shows for them. And uh, two times now, Stout is gym of the year and coaches of the year. What, is, what does that mean to you as you represent them? Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I, I think, you know, representing the gym, representing Stout, it means everything to me. Um, that's why I've, I've selling these shirts. It's like, you know, it, it's, it, it really is everything. It's where I made my career. Um, I kind of just like, you know, I teach the kids. I, mm -hmm. I take the classes with the everyday people. Um, I'm a leader on the team. I coach corner people. Um, I'm there every day. There's, there's no, no question where I'm going to be on any given day, I'm going to be in one of the four gyms every single day. Um, so like, you know, I, it's just me representing the gym, representing all the people of the gym, the kids, the adults, the everybody. Yeah. And you are a great representative of that. Nobody's perfect, but I think you really shown in the cage and out of the cage to be a great example. Mike Wilkins is a great example of that as well as many other people in your gym. But I think, you also mentioned, uh, you know, being a coach. I think there's so much to say. Like, you're not only representing the brand as yourself fighting, but you're also representing uh, the brand to parents. I mean, parents are trusting you and many others. Stout is incredible. But but when they bring a, a child to Stout to get trained, what, five or six is the youngest? Uh, yeah, five five years old is the youngest. Um, yeah, over well, five years years old is the youngest for uh jiu-jitsu striking kids can start at seven you're interested yeah. in having kids i mean that's kindergarten up. it's so incredible i love talking to you and wilkins and everybody like i can imagine that you know that parents are trusting stout and all the staff you included uh with kindergartners on up and can develop all the way to the very top of the pro so we could do a whole we could do a whole thing. People need to be checking out whenever 247 announces the annual awards. Those are a big like I, those are a big deal um, because it's thousands of people voting for Pittsburgh. But get get to your main event. What's your predictions? What do you think is going to happen? Main event, October 26th at a brand new venue for the 247. You know, this is the first time they're, they're, they're invading that venue there. Um, and I know that's going to be. It's always nice to be part of, you know, to be part of history. Um, I predict, like, I'm going to knock him out. Uh, I think first or second, I think m my skills have increased dramatically since my last fight. I think my confidence has increased dramatically since my last fight. Um, I really, really believe that, you know, uh, I'm going to get a finish and in some capacity um and i i i have you know some some tricks up my sleeve and some some things that like people haven't seen from me that i'm i'm really excited to unleash um and you know i i think i'm gonna get a finish for sure well that that's why i i really appreciate you coming on because i know you don't just give a prediction because of to sound good. You give a prediction based on your research, your skills, your development. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I can't wait to be there. You're a perfect main event. There's a couple other uh, great pro fighters on your, on your card as well. And then obviously a stacked amateur card. Uh, it's really exciting to see what 247 has done in the last five years, just celebrated their fifth year where you and many others were on the amateur card. Now you're on the pro card. Pro cards are getting deeper and deeper. There's been pro cards, five, six, seven deep um and it just it's it's really exciting to see the whole development um i'm sure you're okay with this but i am putting you on the spot a little bit your your boy luke the martian martin is fighting for your belt um and so which is awesome the vacant featherweight championship amateur championship because you moved up after after beating kevin Mulrat algar so he's taking on a very tough four and one he's four and oh what what are your thoughts? You've literally been in his shoes, uh, fighting for this belt. What are your thoughts on on him, and what would it mean to you to see that belt remain uh, in stout? Uh, it's his belt. Uh, I think it's uh, well said. You know he he fought for that belt 
a year and a half, or I fought for that about a year and a half ago. Um, he's fighting for the same belt, and I think Luke Martin would beat me from a year and a half ago. And I think that is a, um, you know, that that proves the worth of the gym. That proves the worth of the coaches. That proves the worth of like as long as much as I just invalidated myself. That proves the work of myself as his teammate. Um, and I think that, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Me and Luke, uh, were teammates when I was eight, 18 years old, me, Luke and Josh Perez were teammates at, uh, West Virginia university. And, you know, now we're, uh, we're teammates here together and being able to, uh, compete on the same part as him is it's, uh, it's awesome. It's, it's truly, truly a blessing. And I'm grateful for that. I mean, that makes all the sense in the world. Great, great response, you know, by saying that it's not your belt anymore. It's 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 his to get. And um, I think that does, it doesn't really put you down. You know, Luke Martin, you included, many people at Stout. Like, you should be beating yourself from a year ago or a year and a half ago. You know, that's something that we've seen out of a fellow uh, Pittsburgh guy in um, Justin the General Patton. You know, that, that every time he's in there, it's like he could have beaten himself in the last fight. Um, and, and that's what I think really is what makes Pittsburgh, you're representing Steel City, Seabird, what makes Pittsburgh so exciting is it, it, I, I really think it's the it's likely going to be that known. Like there was a time where Al, Albuquerque, New Mexico, was constantly being announced in the UFC because of uh, Winkle John. And obviously that's an incredible fight camp. But I think it's only a matter of time be, between before Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's already been announced in the octagon but i think more and more and more pittsburgh stout the the academy you know matt factory all these gyms are going to become much more known at a much higher level yeah and i think uh we're getting to the point where people aren't gonna have to leave mm. um to go train like they're they're pittsburgh fighters that have made it um but a lot of times um aside from comma um you know you you don't really see those guys around uh, at least while they're fighting in the ufc and I, I don't ever plan on leaving. I have the coaches I need, I'm the coaches that are going to get me to the top. I have the teammates that are going to get me to the top. And it's only going to bring more people in. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I think I'm going to accomplish my goals, my dreams. I'm going to take everybody with me. And, um, you know, everybody's going to be a part of the ride. And I think it's going to be a fun ride. Wow. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. That is a huge thing. I think that's a big part of your heart, your dedication coming up like you like you did, which you've shared about on this podcast before, being a walk-on at D1. It's no, it's 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 no secret that you know you developed a lot of skill and talent because of going the hard route, you know, going the the less exciting, you know. Um, and, and I think that's awesome. And and you really do represent the heartbeat of Pittsburgh and that mindset. I think it'll be super exciting. Um to, to see exactly what you said. You have the gym. Luke Martin is a Division II national champ, right? And now he's going to be, um, you know, right there for many years to come with you. And I can't wait to see Stout. You brought up knowing, uh, knowing Luke Martin since he was 18. I've known Coach Mike Wilkins since he was 18. And I like to drop that occasionally on this. I think I've said that to you before. I was a track coach when he, he did – uh, a little bit of time at Waynesburg for both track and wrestling. And so I've known he and his wife both since they were uh, 18. And it's just awesome to see that connection. Like, it's just, it does feel like that extended Pittsburgh family. So can't wait to see what you do. Uh, let's get a rundown of who you're grateful for. I would assume you've got a pretty good crew of sponsors coming into this fight. And so uh, shout out to them. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I have a lot of sponsors. Um uh, I, uh, I got a pretty sick banner my girlfriend made for me. Um, so I can't wait to, to have that, uh, displayed. Um, you know, lots of people, Cranston IT, David Allen Clothing Company, um, Ernie Pius. There's a ton of people, um, that have, that have helped me like, you know, financially pursue my journey, but, um, nobody nothing has helped me more than the people that I see every day. Um, the people I stout, the regular people at the gym, the white belts, the blue belts, you know, white to black, the kids, 
you know what I mean? It's uh, nobody's helped me more than, you know, feeling like I have something more to fight for that I'm representing, you know, the gym. Um, and along with that, my coaches, Mike Wilkins, Warren, Warren Stout and Will Morrill um, as mentors and people that have guided me you know, throughout this journey um, and will continue to guide me throughout this journey. So um, my biggest shout out of all is to is to Stout um, and the gym in the city, the city of Pittsburgh, 247 for giving me the opportunity to go out and, uh, you know, do this. Um, all the people there is, you know. That's, you know, all the people in Pittsburgh. That's why that's why I made these T-shirts, to represent the people of Pittsburgh that have helped me, you know, along the way. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's incredible. They For, for people that kind of know the term crowd pop, the crowd pop, the, the, the reaction of the crowd live um, is incredible to experience. Uh, we mentioned that you're, you're going to be, um, you know, you're going to be the main event at the first ever 247 Fighting Championship event at the Greater Pittsburgh Sports Complex in Coriopolis, which is super exciting that, you know, that's going to be a new look. A new event always brings kind of a new look. Uh, so that is uh, really going to be exciting. Um, with this shirt, which is really incredible, are you planning um, on the Sniper nickname going away and Steel City becoming your nickname, or is it kind of a both? Um, yeah, I think Steel City is what I represent. Um, you know, the city that adopted me. Um, I might not be from here, but I think I represent this city. Um, I represent everybody. Um, so you know, and it kind of flows off the tongue. It's beautiful. So it'll be it'll be Lucas Steel City Seabert, right? Yeah, Hunter texted me today and asked me. Um, and I oh, said, Yeah. That is official. Yeah. Okay. Well then yeah. then I then I apologize. I introduced of uh, the former featherweight amateur champ for 247. As I said at the beginning, I called him Lucas Sniper Siebert. Now, when I thank you for coming on, I'm going to announce you on the way out with your new official nickname. Awesome, that Hunter Homestack GM for 247. That, that's going to be the change. The shirts are incredible. Get shirts. You're saying that you're selling them right now, so they need to reach out to you and don't yeah. wait for the event. You can reach out to me. Um, you can reach out to my girlfriend, Zelina. Uh, you can reach out to, or you can go buy them at the closet in Bellevue, Pittsburgh's number one vintage store, um, actually voted Pittsburgh's number one vintage store. Um, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, people help me make them underdog clothing company, uh, has been probably my like biggest sponsor lately. Um, and you know, they helped me kind of like with the design and everything, Ryan Tuttle, um, and like I said, you can go buy these at the closet. Um, you can buy them off me. Um, you can hit me up or Selena since it's fight week. So that would be a lot better. Um, or, That's what uh, I was going to say. Hitting you up fight week might not be the best. So, or, or you can wait and you can buy them at the show. Um, you know, yeah, I, I think, uh, I'm going to sell out of them. I think I'm going to go, go, uh, you know, put on a show and people are going to be like, I got to get that kid's shirt. Well, that's the way. That's the way to do it. Can't wait to see you. Um, really excited. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Main event for two four seven fighting championship. We didn't mention it. If you want to buy tickets, buy from him or at this point two four seven fighting dot com. We'll sell you tickets. You can give uh, Steel City Lucas Sieber credit, um, and then you also can can get the pay per view by downloading two four seven live app on any smart device. I'm doing it that way because you are going to continue to grow your fan base even outside of Pittsburgh. You've been listening to Luke Payson. Super excited to say that your guest tonight has been Lucas Steel City Seabird. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, brother. You got it, brother.